everyone. Uh, well, this is well. We're going to firstly deal with the elephant in the room. Uh, this video uh, could be interpreted as a video for a dual battery installation. And for the majority of you, that's probably what this uh, video could help you with. Uh, for me, it's a triple battery installation. And I'll explain some of that a little bit later on. But let's have a little look at this installation first of all. Check out how I've installed this dual battery system with a VSR so that the smart alternator on my car is able to charge both the starter battery and this additional battery when it needs to. Okay, Phil, well, first of all, uh, what I'm looking at is where I'm going to position uh, the battery. And due to my limitations, I, uh, there is a, a bit of a difficulty in placing it into the engine bay. It's very cramped there. Uh, ideally, I probably would have preferred that, but in this case, uh, I'm going to be placing this in the rear seats as a, a, a storage area underneath the rear seat and I'm going to be placing it there. There are some battery systems which you can purchase, uh, certainly for my car, that will go behind the rear seat and that may be more suitable for many people uh, watching this. Uh, however, the actual installation of this could be very similar because I'm still running the cable uh, th between the start battery and this battery. So uh, this could be helpful for you uh, as to uh, how the, uh, the wire actually connects between the batteries. So looking at this, you will see that uh, I have to do a number of things with regards to the storage area, um, removing some of the grommets here, um, and to make sure that uh, there's enough space for this battery. Now, the one thing that some of you won't be aware of is that I want to keep the rear seats. Uh, if you watched the previous video, you would have seen a storage system that I've got, which, uh, which will be placed into the vehicle so that uh, in the back seat area, so that we could use it for storage. Remember, this is for a world drive. So uh, where I'm placing this battery will be covered by a shelving system. Uh, so this will become uh, very suitable for my purposes. Uh, uh, in some cases, I would say you could probably get a, a, a very efficient 12-volt um, battery because this particular battery uh, is very similar to the actual specifications of the battery uh, in the main engine bay. Uh, there's an actual great location for a grommet uh, very um, close to the sill of uh, the front seat of the driver and you, I was able to um, push this cable through this, this grommet uh, and feed it through to the back seat area. And also uh, what I was really delighted with was that where I wanted to run this cable into the engine bay, there was already uh, some uh, heavy duty cable. And what I did was I zip tied the cable, the new battery cable to this uh, cable that was running underneath the car into the engine bay so it was very safe uh, obviously what you need to do is keep the cable away from uh, area parts that move and parts that get very hot so uh, what I wanted to be able to do is to run that in a safe area and I found this great location following this cable that runs into the engine bay so through the grommet and into the engine bay
What you will also notice here is that uh, this uh, VSR uh, it has to be wired in a very specific way. The starter battery and the second battery will have to be connected uh, to the correct terminal here. And what I've also done is included a, a 50 amp fuse um, circuit breaker into the system as well near the starter battery so I could isolate it as well uh, and that will also uh, uh, trip if it needs to based on what was uh, to making sure that the, uh, the, the system will be safe. I'm going to show you a very quick wiring diagram here. You can uh, search for uh, dual battery system wiring diagrams and you're able to see different setups where the live cable, the red cable, will run between the two batteries and so will the ground cable. You will also see setups where the ground actually is set up separately where it's not going between the two batteries but the ground from the starter battery will go to the chassis of the vehicle and the ground from the second battery will also go to the sh a separate place uh, on the chassis so that they are still grounded but uh, there's no cable running between them. And there are, uh, one very major reason between that is you're only running one cable, you obviously the, the amount of work that's involved with that and cost as well, um, but you do have to make sure it is a good grounding. In this case what you'll see is that I've, I've actually um, uh, used some wire wool and used an existing hole within the, the, the chassis of the vehicle and used a grounding nut so I was able to actually ground the second battery to this location close to the battery itself. So that's a good grounding point for the battery. Being in Malaysia here, <laughs> sometimes getting hold of certain uh, parts for the uh, this, these kinds of installations can be quite tricky. <laughs> and these aren't gold, I assure you. Uh, however, what you will see is that there's actually a, a battery monitor built into this, this terminal here. And it's, it's going to be very useful for me because it, it does help me to understand whether that battery is being charged. Okay, so this is just a little test, just started the car and this is the battery monitor here which is measuring the starter battery and the main lithium battery at the back which is charged by a DC-DC charger and by solar panels on the roof. So currently half and half in the shade but you can see some things going on there with the starter battery. Okay, so uh, what needs to be addressed now is why I need a, another battery, a third battery. Let's clarify what we've now got. I've got a starter battery built uh, into the engine bay. I've got a 300 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery in the rear of the vehicle. So many accessories. Of course, uh, uh, the fridge and, and various 12 volt accessories, uh, being able to charge separate batteries, uh, being, uh, running an induction hob, there's an inverter all in the back area, diesel heater, uh, and, and things that we will need, pumps to pump the water for a shower and so on. So that lithium battery is set up for that. So why do I need this third battery? Well, the one thing that isn't on the vehicle yet is <laughs> our whole lighting system. Uh, and that's what's going to be coming. So while we'll be installing light bars, uh, floodlights, spotlights, ditch lights, uh, even a winch on the vehicle. And when you start adding some of these into the system, because they are going to be coming from the starter battery. And this is where that third battery comes in. Now these batteries are installed in parallel. Now what that means is this. Both batteries are 12 volt batteries. The starter battery and now this third battery is a 12 volt system, not a 24, a 12 volt system. So what will happen is that any accessory, ditch lights, spotlights, floodlights, winch, that will be pulling the battery power, the amps and the currents from the starter battery. But because this other battery is now linked into it in parallel, the amps now will be shared between both batteries. So essentially, instead of all of that current being pulled from the starter battery, it's now some of that from the starter battery and some of that from the second battery. So I will be able to run ditch lights, floodlights, spotlights, a winch, and not have a worry or a fear about getting a flat battery. Remember that this is about 
driving around the world. So there are some times when you're on your own in certain areas, you want to make sure that you can get out to certain areas. And if, and if we get into a place and we have to run a winch and we, we pull ourselves out and then we start the car and it's flat, this solves that problem. Well, hopefully solves that problem, but it will certainly reduce those issues from happening. So that's why I installed a, a third battery to, into the system. Of course, there is some uh, negatives in this, uh, and that is in, it again increases the weight of the vehicle. These batteries are quite heavy, which doesn't make me too comfortable. Uh, so what I am going to be doing is reviewing many things in the car to try, try and review some of the weight again. Uh, that shelving system, for example, I'm thinking about revamping some of that to make sure that that is of its uh, uh, the best weight for the vehicle. So there we have it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, uh, like and subscribe down below and uh, keep safe and I will see you next time.